Welcome back, it's day two. Today is back and traps day. I usually start off my back lift with a forward, hands forward, wide grip lat pull machine. Start with the weight that you can get a nice clean contraction, just let your arms be pulled all the way straight, and then contract them all the way down until the bar is against your chest. I angle my back from the bench, a, a slight angle so that I can get the bar nice and close. And I do use a little momentum to kind of pull the weight down and get it moving. But no matter what, make sure your contractions are complete and that you finish bar against the chest. The wide grip is, is designed to spread your lats, make them grow wider from the back. One thing you'll realize about back is it's a very, very wide dynamic muscle group. There's several layers of your back muscles that crisscross and you have to change your grip variations and also change your, your lifts in order to hit all of them individually. When a back is well developed and well defined, it's very deep and there's a lot of dimension to it. You'll see throughout this workout how we're gonna to try to hit it from a lot of different angles. The second workout we do is very similar to the first, except for instead of having the palms, palms facing out, we bring the palms forward. So it's a palms forward pull up, but with the lap pull machine. Usually I go a little bit lighter with this one because it's not as uh, easy to do. But the bottom line with this is keep your elbows snug against your body. Again, full extension of your arms all the way up and then pull the bar straight down and tighten to your chest. Keep that arch in your lower back to keep your shoulders behind your butt. That keeps your back safe, but also forces you to incorporate more back muscles as you execute a complete contraction. With all of these back lifts, you're gonna to wanna to go for four sets of 10 to 15 reps. Use as little momentum as possible so that you can execute these movements with just your muscles and focus the, the, the pressure and the flexion on the muscle itself. When you use momentum, you're basically bringing in a lot of different muscle groups to assist in the movement. You wanna grow a specific area, you wanna focus the tension on that one area. Momentum is gonna defeat the purpose. Okay, for the third lift, we're using the same machine, the lap pull machine. Switch out the handles to the close grip uh, lap pull down. Uh, I like to keep my arms close against my body. Focus that pressure into the middle of your back. Try to squeeze your, your, your scapula or your shoulder blades together as you finish the contraction. Keep your elbows tight so that it's a straight up and down movement. It focuses more of the center of your back. Keep that negative arch in your lower back as well. And make sure you drive your elbows deep behind your body to get a full range of motion. Let the weight pull them straight. Keep as much tension on your arms as you can. And as you execute the contraction, just remember to keep your elbows tight and drive them back and downward. This will drive a lot of muscle blood into the middle of your back and the muscles will swell. And these three workouts to get started are a great way to warm up. Again, four sets, 10 to 15 reps. You always wanna push it to the point where you're almost failing the last set. Failure is a great way to know that you're working hard enough because your body's telling you you've worn it out and it's time to go on to the next lift. Okay, so if you notice, we did just did three upper back lifts from above. Now we're going in right into the meat and potatoes of lifting, the deadlift. This is a barbell deadlift. I like to use the alternating grip patterns. You notice one hand's forward and one hand is back. That really helps you strengthen your grip and hold onto that bar without using straps. I like to avoid straps as much as possible because I want to build up my grip and forearm strength. And I, trust me, you can pick up a lot of weight with this switch grip. I rotate and alternate for first set but I usually start with 225 pounds. If you notice, I use a little bench. That helps me get my feet off the ground. The feet off the ground is gonna enable me to get a little bit deeper as the downward motion of the contraction is completed. Basically, the lower I can get that bar to the ground, the more I can contract my back. Again, keep that negative arch in your lower back and pull upward and out with a little bit of your hamstrings and legs at the beginning of the rep, but your back ultimately completes the movement as you straighten your back and roll your shoulders back at the top. This is a lift that is invaluable as a hunter because it's incorporating your hamstrings, your quads, your core, and of course your upper back. Execute this one with proper form because it is something that you could be injured if you're not. If you're not sure how to do it, watch this video several times and start really light to make sure you get the form down. Again, lower back, keep that negative arch. At the beginning of the rep, pull with the legs literally stand up strong and then pull with the upper back and roll your shoulders back to the top, almost pinching them together. This will put a lot of meat on your back. Great lift. The next lift I recommend is a one-arm dumbbell row. I like to lean against the rack so that I can keep my, my shoulders higher than my butt. Keep your legs semi-bent, but let that dumbbell pull your arm straight. Drive it with your arm and elbow close against your side. 
straight up and back. Keep that arch in your back again. And as I do these one arm rows, the higher your, your chest is from your relative to your butt, the, the lower you're gonna work on your back. If you notice my elbow is hitting way low in my back and I'm actually flexing the middle and lower part of my back as I do this contraction. Again, I don't use straps. I try to grip that weight as heavy as I can to help build my forearm and wrist strength. You can use, try not to use momentum, just execute slow controlled movements, increase the weight incrementally through the sets and drive that blood into the lower part of your back. You'll feel a lot of different muscles incorporated, especially your core to keep you balanced. If you notice, I'm doing one belt dumbbell at a time. So when you finish the, the, the reps, roll the dumbbell across, start over with the other side. Again, four sets, 10 to 15 reps. So the next workout is a core workout. I call them side oblique raises. Basically hold a heavy dumbbell in the opposite hand, keep your feet shoulder width apart, and pivot at your hips so that you're extending the right or opposite side of the weight, uh, your, your oblique muscles. When you pull, pull from the side of your body. You can see as I'm flexing here, the muscles are the outside of your abs and they'll build that deep cut on the uh, edge of your six pack. That's a huge core muscle for pivoting, torquing, bending down. Grab the heaviest dumbbell you can to execute 10 to 15 reps for four sets. But most importantly, just make sure you go slow. I actually like to put my hand on the side that's being flexed just to fill the muscles and make sure that they're contracting properly. And always focus and flex on the outside of your abs, opposite of the weight. Switch hands and execute the same thing. Four sets, 10 to 15 reps per side. Your lower back is probably hammered by now, but I like to finish off the lower back with a bent over dumbbell row. Keep your back parallel to the ground, slight bend in your knees. Make sure you grab a weight that you can pull all the way to your chest. Instead of keeping your elbows tight against your chest this time, switch your palms so that they're parallel to your body and pull up and out as you're doing this so that you're wider in the back. Again, elbows away from the body as opposed to tight against the sides like you did with the one arm row. This is a little bit harder because you're suspended in the air, so don't start with the heavy weight. Most importantly, have good form, flex your core as hard as you can, and make sure you get all arms straight and then all the way up and tight. Squeeze your shoulders together in the back and try to, try to force those muscles together. And you're gonna feel it when it's done. Okay, so the next grip are barbell shrugs. There's two types of shrugs I'm going to recommend and I'll show them to you at the beginning. The first one is just the palms back, shoulder width apart, get a nice square foundation with your feet and just, I like to grab 135 pounds, it's not a lot of weight but my back is destroyed by now. So all I do is keep my arms straight and then let the weight pull from the top of my neck down to the middle of my back and then I drive my shoulders while they're back up to my ears. You'll feel your traps flexing as you do this. That's a long muscle that goes all the way to the middle of your back, from, again, from the, top, from the top of your neck, and just pull and flex and just drive your shoulders into your ears while keeping them back relative to the front of your chest. With, with 30, 135 pounds, I can do usually 20 to 25 reps, four sets. I alternate these shrugs with the shrug that I kind of made up, and you can only do it if you have the plates with the little cutouts in them. If you notice, I'm also six feet tall, so it helps to be tall to be able to reach them. If you can't reach it, it's tough to do. But the idea of this is that you get your arms out as far as you can and execute a, shr a shrug with your arms at an extreme angle like that. It pulls them from a lot different angle and it makes them soar really quickly. So I know it's working something. I shoot for four sets of 10 to 15 reps on this because it's a little bit more difficult. But I alternate this with the palms back, closer grip, just to do, of the four sets, I do two of each, just to give it some variation and also hit as much of my muscles as possible. Like I said, your back has a lot of dimension and a lot of depth to it. You gotta hit it from as many angles as possible, all while maintaining good form and driving as much blood and pump as you can into the individual muscles you're focusing on. So that's it for our back workout. Um, if you did it right, you're definitely gonna be feeling it. Drink a ton of water, Make sure you stretch your muscles out, get them really loose before you go home. Tomorrow's leg day. It's the day you love to hate. The legs are the foundation for everything, especially as a hunter. So get good rest tonight. Make sure you plan at least an hour, hour and a half to finish leg day. Stay tuned. Yes, sir.